Important day in the race for the White House. Most of the results are in now on this Super Tuesday. But it wasn't a clean sweep for Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. A Laurel County home is damaged and a woman injured when severe weather rolls through Laurel County. And the Cats hope to score a big road win at Florida tonight in the last week of the regular season. WKYT News starts now with First Alert Weather. Good evening to you. Some rough weather on this first day of March as severe storms cause damage in parts of southern Kentucky. More on that in just a minute, but while the weather is much calmer tonight, it is also much colder. We begin tonight with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey and your no wait weather forecast. You can really feel it out there, Chris. Yeah, you really can. Temperatures have dropped greater than 30 degrees since this afternoon across the entire area. Big storm system wrapping up to our northeast. Cold front that brought the gusty winds, the strong and severe thunderstorms earlier in the day, now crossing the Appalachian Mountains, heading into the mid-Atlantic states. Now it's all about that northwesterly wind flow, ushering in much colder air. Defender radar network not picking up on a whole lot, though. We've had some snowflakes on and off across parts of central Kentucky. We've had a few here at the station over the past few hours. 32 degrees. We hit 66 for a high temperature in Lexington. We've cut that in half and then some. Eastern Kentucky, 70. A little earlier, we're dropping it quickly toward the low and mid 30s. Let's throw the winds into the mix. It's a wind chill of 23 degrees right now, and we were almost at 70 at one point this afternoon. How do we look into the day tomorrow? Mid 20s out the door tomorrow morning with a wind chill in the teens, maybe a passing flurry. It's a cold day by early March standards, only upper 30s to around 40 with a partly sunny sky. I'll come back at 11:13, guys, and show you how this busy overall weather pattern shows no signs of letting up. Chris, thank you. In Laurel County, a severe storm caused quite a mess near London this afternoon. A first responder had to be rushed to the hospital when strong winds blew off the roof of her home. That storm also damaged some other buildings and brought down trees. Bill Pendleton talked to people who saw it happen. He continues our first alert weather team coverage. And what happens? James Sexton <laughs> says his granddaughter just had severe weather drills at school when they looked out their window today to see their neighbor's roof take flight. And we looked up and the top of the trailer come completely off. And as it moved up this way, then took the piece of that barn roof off. EMT Mary Messer and paramedic Danny Pratt lived in the home on Sasser School Road. Messer was rushed to the hospital for a leg injury. My daughter-in-law was a nurse and she ran inside and helped the girl inside. She had a, a bruise on her bottom part of her leg. I thought she said maybe a small fracture. While Messer was being treated, other first responders worked in the pouring down rain to remove valuables. And to put a temporary cover over the roofless home. Yeah, well, unfortunately, uh, our job is 24-7, uh, no matter what the weather conditions are. Uh, and as long as it's safe uh, to keep our guys working, um, you know, we're going to... Uh, we're going to work as hard as we can. Messer was said to be pretty banged up by the storm, but was treated and released from the local hospital. Firefighters say they did what they could to save what they could. Taking a lot of their personal belongings out, uh, moved what else we could over to the uh, only one section that has a little bit of a roof left. Emergency officials say they believe the damage was caused by straight line winds, but the National Weather Service is supposed to be out Wednesday to survey it further. In Laurel County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. Laurel County first responders say some small buildings were also damaged, including a shed near Bush Elementary School. Storms also caused damage in other parts of southern Kentucky. Lona shared this picture from Corbin showing a tree knocked over by strong winds. It fell onto a shed. You can track storms and the latest traffic with the WKYT Weather Plus Traffic app. You can download it for free in the app or Google Play stores. It is the biggest day of the presidential campaign so far. Today, a dozen states held primaries or caucuses on this Super Tuesday. And while no candidate can clinch the nomination tonight, the results show it's been a super day for Republican Donald Trump and Democrat Hillary Clinton. But as Craig Boswell shows us, challengers Ted Cruz and Bernie Sanders also picked up some key wins. Donald Trump had a super Tuesday with CBS News projecting wins in the Republican primaries in Georgia, Alabama, Massachusetts, Virginia, and Tennessee. I think honestly we've done something that almost nobody thought could be done. 
Ted Cruz nabbed the biggest prize of the night, his home state of Texas, a crucial win for the conservative candidate. CBS News also projects he won Oklahoma. Our campaign is the only campaign that has beaten, that can beat, and that will beat Donald Trump. A third of Republican voters said the most important quality in their candidate is that he shares their values and can bring change. For Democrats, it's that they have the right experience. CBS News projects Democrat Hillary Clinton won Arkansas, where she was once first lady, along with Georgia, Virginia, Alabama, Texas, and Tennessee. This country belongs to all of us, not just those at the top. Bernie Sanders is celebrating a victory in his home state of Vermont. CBS News also projects he picked up Oklahoma. This campaign is not just about electing a president. It is about making a political revolution. Half the delegates needed for the Republican nomination are being handed out tonight, and more than a third needed to clinch on the Democratic side. Craig Boswell, CBS News, Washington. Now that Super Tuesday is winding down, the candidates are turning their attention to Saturday's contest, which includes the Kentucky Republican Caucus. And Donald Trump wasted no time talking to Kentucky voters. Thousands of people attended his rally in Louisville this afternoon. This comes after Ben Carson's town hall in Lexington yesterday. As Garrett Weimer tells us, other Republican candidates are focusing on Kentucky as well. Are you ready to make Kentucky Trump country on Saturday? Are you ready to get your neighbors and friends out to vote for Donald Trump on Saturday? Trump's team certainly hopes so, trying to make sure the thousands who came to his rally also turn out to caucus for him this weekend. So on Saturday, very important, because everything we do, it's all wonderful, but if we don't vote, that's not so good. So Saturday, you have to get out and vote, okay? The fifth, you have to get out and vote. We promise, everybody promise, right? The executive director of the Republican Party of Kentucky tells me Saturday's caucus allows Kentucky to be a relevant player in the primary process. He says the Commonwealth's already shown that. With visits from Ben Carson and Donald Trump and an expected stop from Marco Rubio on Friday. Rubio's rally is scheduled for 10:15 Friday morning at the Bluegrass Ballroom at the Lexington Center. Meanwhile, Trump's supporters are confident he'll win Kentucky and the country. Um, I'm all about Trump. People think I'm crazy, but I think he's awesome. He shoots straight from the hip. He's exactly what we need, and I'm looking forward to him being the president. In Louisville. On Saturday, I'm going to be watching Kentucky. I'm going to be watching. Garrett Weimer, WKYT. Now, Ted Cruz plans to send his father, Raphael, to Kentucky on Friday to campaign for him in Louisville and Bowling Green. Along with Kentucky, Kansas, Louisiana, Maine, and Nebraska will all hold either caucuses or primaries on Saturday. For Republicans, Kentucky and Louisiana have the most delegates at stake, with 46 apiece. Kentucky's Republican delegates will be divided among the candidates who have at least 5% of the vote. The Cats are in a battle for first place in the SEC, and Saturday's loss at Vanderbilt didn't help, but UK hoped for much better luck tonight on the road at Florida. Our Rob Bromley joins us now with some of the highlights of tonight's game. Hi, Rob. Hello, and the Cats looking to bounce back tonight, but they would have to do it on the road down in Gainesville, Florida. And Scalabi Sierra starting for the first time since December. He hits the hook. Cats had the early lead. Kentucky built that lead to 14. Tyler Eulis, nice dish to Alex Poitras. Kentucky up 32 to 18. Florida came back. Here is Casey Hill with a steal. Down to the other end, he slams it. And the lead is down to two. Cats up by four at halftime into the second half. John Igbunu powers inside. The UK lead three. He had nine dunks in the game. But then Kentucky took off. Tyler Eulis to Jamal Murray, the three out of the corner. He knocks it down. And then on the break, check out the ball movement here. Poitras is the man who benefits. Cats get the win. Murray with 21. Eulis, 19 points and 11 assists. And a big game for Scal LaBissiere tonight. 11 points, 8 rebounds. Didn't play that many minutes, but it was a good effort. Cal talks about him coming up in sports. All right, we'll see you in just a bit, Rob. Thank you. Up next for the Cats, LSU at Rupp Arena on Saturday. You'll be able to see it right here on WKYT at 2 o'clock.
Estill County leaders hoped a public forum tonight about naturally occurring radioactive waste being dumped at a landfill would calm some fears. What people there were told in nine minutes. And then how one student is trying to help others who say they've been the victims of social media bullying. She always wanted to be a mother, and when she finally got pregnant, she couldn't be more thrilled. But then she was diagnosed with cancer and would have to undergo chemo while pregnant. Her amazing story, Wednesday at 6 on WKYT. Kentucky mornings start here. Breaking and overnight news, weather to plan your day, plus traffic you can take with you. Make WKYT this morning part of your Kentucky morning. Weekdays from 4.30 to 7 on WKYT. Philip Pratt, a proud grandfather, a loving and caring family man, a hardworking small business owner, someone who knows how to grow jobs and change the landscape in Frankfurt. Philip Pratt will hold government accountable responsibly, fight Obama's crippling government overreach on our agriculture economy, and preserve our Kentucky heritage in Owen and Scott County. On Tuesday, March 8th, vote Philip Pratt for state representative. After you're injured at work, a lot of times the insurance company will attempt to call you, take statements. Don't speak to them until you speak with an experienced workers' compensation attorney. The insurance company will attempt to settle your case for pennies on the dollar. Before you talk to the insurance company, call us first. Our job is to make sure you get all the money you deserve. Call Morgan, Collins, and Yeast. 1-800-55-WILDCAT. Change is taking root in Frankfurt. We need a voice that'll be heard. Daniel Elliott is the conservative for Boyle and Casey counties. Dedicated to protect our God-given freedoms from Obama liberals, Daniel will ensure government is held accountable and our Kentucky values are protected. Daniel Elliott will fight government overreach that's crippled our economy. We need a strong voice. On Tuesday, March 8th, vote Daniel Elliott for state representative. Get WKYT news and weather updates on 104.5 The Cat. Now, your hour-by-hour -hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. A lot of gusty winds again across the area today. Had those peak gusts greater than 40 miles an hour, even getting uh, some severe thunderstorms into parts of southern Kentucky. Gusts are coming down a little bit as the temperatures drop, too. Take a look at the current winds across central and eastern Kentucky. We're getting those gusts now between 20 and 30 miles an hour as opposed to 30 or 40 plus. Last hour, 24 miles per hour in Lexington. Northwesterly winds at that. So it's a colder wind blowing 32 degrees. We were at 66 this afternoon before the thunderstorms blew into town. Low 70s into eastern Kentucky. Look to our north. It gets even colder. That's where the air is coming from. This is no slouch by early March standards. 19 into the windy city of Chicago. Mid-teens showing up across parts of Iowa. We're not going to get that cold, but it's an indication of a cold night ahead at 25 degrees tomorrow afternoon. We're going to struggle to get out of the upper 30s. A lot of folks will check in. 38, 39, 40 degrees. It will never feel that warm, courtesy of gusty winds. Tomorrow evening, after some sunshine, clouds are back into central and eastern Kentucky. Precipitation-wise, the showers and thunderstorms from earlier in the day now off to our east, dealing with a couple of light snow flurries or an out-and-out -out snow shower. Forecast for tomorrow, that northwesterly wind flow we were just looking at that is now kicking in really kicks into high gear as we go through tomorrow morning. Cold high pressure across the eastern part of the country, wiping out the springtime air we've had for the past several days. Brand new hour-by-hour -hour forecast that will take us through much of the week. 25 tomorrow morning out the door. It's going to feel like the teens bundle up. Tomorrow afternoon, sun begins to make an appearance. Not going to do a whole lot to warm things up. Upper 30s, low 40 southern parts of the bluegrass state. Our little break in the action doesn't last very long. Clouds increase tomorrow, and by tomorrow night, a little bit of light snow tries to develop into early Thursday morning. There's a chance northern Kentucky could pick up on a little coating of snow to begin the day. Then temperatures come up. You get a cold rain, low 40s for most of Thursday. There's some ugly in that Thursday forecast. Into Friday morning, wrap around light rain showers or snow showers to begin your Friday. We go through the afternoon. You get a little more in the way of some sunshine with temperatures that will spike into the mid and maybe some upper 40s during that time. Are you looking for springtime? 
I see it coming, at least for a while into next week. High pressure across the southeastern seaboard. Jet stream takes a big dip across the Plain States. That's also a setup that you get this kind of a pattern can turn from warm to stormy at some point from Tuesday toward the middle and end of next week. So while, yes, it is a spring pattern, keep in mind, spring patterns around here can often lead to thunderstorms, and I think that's a setup we'll have to keep a close eye on as we go toward next week. Short term, colder than normal conditions will carry us into the upcoming weekend, and well, like we kind of do around here, guys, we flip a switch, and all of a sudden we go to 70 early next week. Well, at least we're going to see a little bit of sunshine tomorrow. With we will. Tomorrow afternoon is going to look good. It's just not going to feel good. 66 this afternoon, 32 right now. Incredible. Yep. Thank you, Chris. You Hundreds of people showing up at a public forum tonight hoping to get some answers about some naturally occurring radioactive waste dumped in an Estill County landfill. That's next. Choosing a college is about setting a course, a path that leads to your destination. At EKU, the adventure is what lies in between. Eastern Kentucky University. Great journeys begin here. If your home, office, or church is in need of accessibility, visit the friendly specialist at Transitions Lift and Elevator today. Make an appointment at our drive-in showroom where we'll demonstrate the benefits of our easy-to-use Bruno stair lift system, wheelchair lifts, and elevators before we install them. Our top-of-the-line affordable equipment is easy to use and custom-made to fit any home or business. Transitions Lift and Elevator is a local family-owned company and a factory-trained and certified Bruno dealer serving all of Kentucky. You do things to me I, I can't explain You make me behave If you won Kentucky's Lucky for Life and got a thousand bucks a day in the mail for the rest of your life, you'd love your mailbox too. Join Morning Point Foundation as it hosts an evening with Kim Campbell, wife of country music legend Glenn Campbell. Kim will share her message of hope about her family's personal journey with Alzheimer's disease. This free public awareness event takes place March 15th at 7 o'clock at Ashland Avenue Baptist Church in Lexington. To reserve your spot, visit MorningPointFoundation.com or call today. He's been turned down. Command stopper. Hey! You need a car. I got turned down for credit. Turned down for what? For credit. Sorry, earwax. Turned down for what? Credit. Drive time won't turn you down, regardless of credit. Yeah! Cool. <laughs> Save yourself. Get approved at drive time first. Call, click, or visit. People in Estill County say they've had a lot of questions since finding out that naturally occurring radioactive waste was illegally dumped at a landfill near Irvine. Tonight, county leaders tried to answer them in a public forum. They say investigators told them 2,000 tons of waste was dumped in the landfill, but they don't know exactly where all of it is in the landfill. Monique Blair has the story new at 11. Because Thursday afternoon, I really didn't want to start this. We just got through talking about Simonella. So here we go again. Public officials explained to the crowd of nearly 600 people that they are currently trying to figure out exactly where the more than 2,000 tons of radioactive material was buried and how deep it was buried at the landfill. There is not a present threat to public health, meaning that whatever material has been put into that landfill has been sufficiently buried. Officials are now trying to figure out if there was a threat to the landfill employees back when the materials were brought to the landfill. Also, if there is potential for a public health threat in the future. The more tests we can get and the more reassurance we can get, the safer you all will feel in our community. Now, after the public officials spoke, many people from the crowd had several questions and concerns. You know, we're not to discuss the landfill, why they do what they do. Why 
They was, they, this load was allowed to come in just like any other load was allowed to come in. Director of Landfill Operations in the East Region, Dave Rattel, says the Blue Ridge Landfill did not know they were accepting radioactive waste. It was characterized as not, not as T-norm waste. It was characterized as regular drilling mud. Several people said they were concerned about what else could be buried at the landfill. One person calling it a time bomb. You find it and you remove it. In Estill County, Monique Blair, WKYT. State investigators will continue to test the landfill and determine what needs to be done with the radioactive waste. That landfill is expected to receive a violation notice sometime this week. Now to a developing election story. We have just learned that Republican Marco Rubio has been projected as the winner of the Minnesota GOP primary. It is his first win of the campaign. Go to WKYT.com for more Super Tuesday results. New tonight, deputies arrested a man they say drove a car while high on drugs with his one-year-old son inside. The Laurel County Sheriff's Office charged 36-year-old Wesley Wagers with DUI and wanton endangerment. After receiving a tip, deputies say they saw Wagers' car swerving on the road, so they pulled him over late last night. They say Wagers admitted using meth earlier that day. Deputies say the child was in the front seat in an unsecured car seat. We have an update tonight on a story we first told you about last night at 11. Some students at Elkhorn Middle School in Franklin County said someone had been posting vulgar things about them on Instagram. One parent called it social media bullying. The school hasn't been able to figure out who's responsible, but the mother of one of the students told us tonight an eighth grader at the school has now started an Instagram account dedicated to posting positive messages and pictures about those who are being bullied. Rob's up next with all the region highlights. Hey, Rob. And a big night for state scoring champ Whitney Creech. John Calipari puts Scalabi Sierra in the starting lineup. The big men coming through tonight in Gainesville. Sports is up next. WKYT's High School Game Time is brought to you by Eastern Kentucky University. This new DQ chicken bruschetta is a high-end Italian sports car. No, actually, it's oven-hot focaccia bread, a balsamic glaze. It's a high-end Italian romance. No, it, it's chopped tomatoes and herbs. It's a high-end Italian fashion. It's a high-end Italian sandwich. I like sandwich. The new DQ Bakes Chicken Bruschetta, a premium Italian sandwich at a not-so-premium price. Hot out of the oven, only at your DQ. This is fan food, not fast food. If you have questions about your on-the-job injury, visit ForThePeople.com for more information. Morgan & Morgan, For The People. What do these women have in common? They are the staff of Ageless Medical Weight Loss. They've lost a combined 1,300 pounds. The team at Ageless will understand your struggles and celebrate your victories. For a medically supervised, affordable weight loss solution, call Ageless today for a free consultation. I'm WKYT's Rebecca Smith, and I stand for Kentucky. Wednesday's Powerball jackpot is $292 million. Checking out the RAV4? Yep, looking for something fun. Well, with available Sport Tune suspension, you can turn any trip into an awesome adventure. Yeah! <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Yeah! Errands. Aren't they the best? Now, during Toyota's One for Everyone sales event, get 0% financing on many of your favorite new Toyotas or get a great low lease deal. For all Toyota offers, go to buyatoyota.com. Have fun running those errands. Toyota, let's go places. Lottery's Keto, the exciting way to have fun every five minutes. Fueling imagination. Funding education. I was scared to go back to the dentist, because I hadn't been in for a while. But they cut me some slack when they saw all this plaque, and they didn't make fun of my smile. I don't have insurance, but they didn't mind, which I thought was a setup for robbing me blind. But I financed my teeth, this toothpaste was free, and the numbing stuff really worked wonders on me. 
no insurance, with a free new patient exam and x-rays, plus extended financing available, dentistry's never been easier. Call 1-800-ASPEN-DENTAL. I couldn't get work opportunities without a high school diploma. And I said, it's time for me to go back to school, get my GED, and further my education. It was a feeling that I cannot explain. Once I received that GED, I decided to keep going to college and do something. My son and I, we are stable. I pay the bills. I'm able to do all that because I got my GED. For a limited time, the GED test is 50% off for Kentuckians. Find out more by contacting your Kentucky Adult Education Program today. Get weather plus traffic with a WKYT weather app. Have the Defender Radar Network in the palm of your hand while checking your driving conditions for your commute on the same screen. Weather plus traffic on the WKYT weather app. John Calipari tweaking his team since the loss down at Vandy and the Cats looking to respond tonight in Gainesville, Florida. Scal Labissiere in the starting lineup for the first time since the Ohio State game back in December. He hits the hook early. He also picked up two early fouls. Tyler Ulis struggled offensively at Vanderbilt. He nails the three. Cats on a 9-0 run. They led by 10. The lead went to 14, but Florida rallied. Casey Hill to steal the slam. Florida pulling it within two, 34-32. Then Ulis playing with two fouls. Feeds Marcus Lee. Cats up 36-32 at halftime. End of the second half. Jamal Murray starts to heat up. The UK lead is five. Ulis from way out. The lead is 10. Tremendous ball movement on this break. Euless feeding Poitras. 11 assists for Euless tonight and 19 points to go with us. Murray out of the corner. He finished with 21. The ninth straight game with 20 or more for Jamal Murray. And then it's Euless throwing the lob there to Marcus Lee. A 15 point lead. Five players in double figures tonight. Kentucky wins it 88 to 79. Scal 11 points and eight rebounds. You practiced yesterday great. And I looked at Tyler and I just said, I'm thinking about starting him tomorrow. He said, do it. I said, yep, then I will. And that's what I did. But what did you tell him when you told him you were going to start him? I said, you two on that team, and I watched it. So Alex and he were together, and I said, you know what? I'm start that's who I'm starting tomorrow. That's what's great about being a head coach. You can do stuff like that. <laughs> Second night of the girls' 11th region tournament, Bryan Station and Madison Central, probably the most even of the opening round games. Fans keeping a close eye on the Kentucky game at the 11th region. On the court, Bryan Station was building a lead. Dustin E. Cozart left open out of the corner, three of her 11, 47 to 34, Bryan Station. Bailey Vanover driving for Madison Central, the layup and the foul. Brian Station had the answer. Jalen Martin hitting the short jumper. She had a game high 25. Brian Station advancing with a 76 to 58 win. Lafayette and Western Hills in the 11th region nightcap. Western Hills scoring the first points of the game. Like Kenzie Ritchie driving in, but this night belonged the Generals. Kiara Pankins gets it inside the bucket and the foul. She had a game high 20. Caroline Bennett knocking down the three from the wing. She finished with 11 in this one. And the Generals are marching on with a 51 to 26 victory. Now to the 12th region, Rock Castle County and Mercer County. Third quarter, Lexi Lake spots up the three, puts the Titans up 43-36. Later in the quarter, the other Lake, Faith Lake, driving left, two of her 16. Mercer County began the second half on a 16-0 run, finally stopped when Mahela Saylor flips it in as she falls down, but too much for Mercer County. Emma Davis steal on the press and the layup there. Mercer County advancing 68-47. Staying in the girls' 12th region tournament, Danville in Southwestern, first quarter. Warriors go into the paint to Elizabeth Latham. Early lead for Southwestern. The ads playing some defense. Going in for the layup here. But Samantha Fitzgerald was knocking down jumpers. First from the high post, and then she gets the three here out of the corner. Long one there. It'll be Southwestern against Mercer County semifinal Friday night. 58 to 33 is the final. And state scoring champion Whitney Creech and Jenkins facing off with Perry Central in the 14th. 
56 points from eclipsing the national record. Creech got going early in transition, splits the defense and the foul. She was just getting started. Again, getting around everybody. The lefty goes righty off the window. Creech with 34 at halftime. Again on the drive. Ball fake. Freezes the defender. Creech with a huge night tonight. She would finish with 59 points. Jenkins wins it 75 to 65. And stay with us now. Matt Jones is up next. My attorney treated me like family. They don't worry about what they get. They worry about what you get. It's that simple. Serious, experienced results. Call the Becker Law Office. Just dial threes. Choosing a college is about setting a course, a path that leads to your destination. At EKU, the adventure is what lies in between. Eastern Kentucky University. Great journeys begin here. way to have fun every five minutes. Fueling imagination. Funding education. Farmer. Frankfurt Outsider. That's Chuck Tackett. Pro-family and pro-business. Chuck Tackett rejects the notion by Washington liberals that the answer to every problem is another big government program. We can trust Chuck Tackett to put our families first by standing up to big government and big business. In the special election for state representative March 8th, send a message to the career politicians. Vote Chuck Tackett. Farmer, Frankfurt Outsider. Hi, checking out the RAV4? Yep, looking for something fun. Well, with available sport tune suspension, you can turn any trip into an awesome adventure. Yeah! <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Yeah! Errands. Aren't they the best? Now, during Toyota's One for Everyone sales event, get 0% financing on many of your favorite new Toyotas or get a great low lease deal. For all Toyota offers, go to buyatoyota.com. Have fun running those errands. Toyota, let's go places. Our city is like one big machine with thousands of moving parts. LexTrend keeps more of those parts moving than most of us realize. Moving thousands of people a day to and from places of education or employment or enjoyment. Days and nights, rain or shine, weekdays and weekends, Sundays and holidays. So whether you ride the bus or not, you can count on the fact that many of the people you count on count on LexTrend. When big news breaks, be the first to know. Download the WKYT News app and turn on push alerts. Breaking news at your fingertips when you need to know what's going on. Push alerts, now available on the WKYT News app. WKYT's first alert weather follows you wherever you go. On TV, online, on your phone, and throughout the day on Wild 103.9. They were just, I mean, they were like family. I couldn't ask for, for, you know, better help than I did get from Becker Law. Serious, experienced results. Call the Becker Law Office. Just dial threes. Have something that needs investigating? Email us or call the WKYT Investigates tip line. The Kentucky men's team played tonight against Florida in a game I'm sure you watched. But it's also time to check out Matthew Mitchell's women's team. They play this weekend in the SEC tournament, and they've had kind of a wild season. In non-conference play, they were undefeated, beat Duke, beat Louisville, two teams that are really good this season. But during conference play, they've been up and down. They won at A&M, one of the hardest places to win in the SEC, but then they've lost at home to bad teams. It's important for Matthew Mitchell that they have a good SEC tournament. They're probably going to be under when it comes to the NCAA, I meaning I think the Wildcats will be a better team than the seed they get. But if they could somehow make a little run in the SEC, they could get up to a three or a four. And I think Matthew Mitchell, if he avoids UConn, would have a shot at his first Final Four. Look, the women's team is great to watch. You've probably had a chance to go to one of their games. But it's time for Matthew Mitchell, he knows this, to make a move to the Final Four for the next step of the program. This team can do it, but it starts this week at the SEC tournament. I'm Matt Jones, and this has been Overtime. 
Matt, thank you. We had quite a temperature swing today. I can't we imagine did. what your emoji is going to look like. You know what? Like. It's going to be a little frowny face tomorrow <laughs> morning. You're going to be a little angry with some snowflakes around in mid 20s. You'll brighten up with a little smile tomorrow afternoon. Temperatures hit the upper 30s. How about the weekend forecast? Could be a shower or two early on Saturday. Sunday looks better. Guys. We like seeing those shades. Yes, we do. Break them out this weekend. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow.